G'day, welcome to Partakers Wednesday Worship on the 21st of September 2011. We start the day with a song, Only a Boy Named David, sung by Daniel Martin. Well, only a boy named David, only a little sling. Well, only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. So only a boy named David, only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David, and five little stones he took. And one little stone went in the sling, and the sling went round and round. We now have our Bible talk, shared with us once again by a guest, Jim Ellis. Over to you, Jim. Jesus spent complete nights in prayer, seeking strength and wisdom from his Father in heaven. We dare not go into battle with the enemy in our strength alone. The hymn writer wrote, Put on the gospel armour, each piece put on with prayer. Well, how do we do that? The armour we need is supplied by our Lord. It is described for us by Paul in Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18. He says, Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, that you might stand in the evil day. He then goes on to say, Make sure you take unto yourselves the whole armour of God. The hymn writer, knowing that verse of scripture, wrote these words, Leave no unguarded place. Very apt, for we can be so forgetful and so negligent at times, can't we? We need to be aware of our weak points where we may be unguarded. The Bible says, give the devil no room. I find it a great help each morning during my devotional time with the Lord to spend some time putting the Christian armour on. How? As I get physically dressed in the morning, taking time to put each part of my clothing on carefully, what do I do? I stand before a mirror. Now we need to come before the mirror of God's Word and take by faith the spiritual armour piece by piece, reminding ourselves of what it does in order to be strong for the day's coming battles, whatever they may be. We take on, for instance, the helmet of salvation. What's that for? to protect our minds. You see, here is a point of entry that if we don't protect it, the devil will get in. So how do we protect it? By scripture. Let this mind be in you, the Bible says, which was in Christ Jesus. So I ask for the mind of Christ. What would Christ do in this particular situation? Then we must take on to ourselves the breastplate of righteousness. This time I remind myself I am clothed in Christ's righteousness to gain me heaven. Can't get there anywhere else. This prevents me boasting and it humbles me so I can be in a humble spirit each moment of the day ever grateful to Jesus for his robe of righteousness. Also I know there needs to be a righteousness outworked from within me to seek to live like Jesus, to honour him and be a light shining for Jesus. And then I must have the belt of truth on. I believe I must be held by God's truth, the Bible, in all I do, say, or think. Not what I think, but how God says I should react to each situation during the day. Not legalistically, but trusting the Holy Spirit to bring the truth to light to protect me. My feet need to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, My, they're strange words, aren't they? The Roman footwear had to be strong and able to grip rough terrain. To walk steadily through the day, how are we going to stand firm and not slip into simple situations? By taking a firm stand as a Christian soldier. 
reminding ourselves who we belong to. The sword of the spirit and shield of faith in my hands is the next part of the armour we need to take on. That is, having scripture ready to hand to fight off attacks from Satan as he buffets us. Jesus did this when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Remember what he said each time the devil tempted him? Has not God said? In other words, devil, you're wrong in what you're tempting me to do. So I'm going to do what God wants me to do. So how important it is for us to read the scriptures regularly to find out how God wants us to conduct ourselves each day. And then finally we put on all prayer. Living through the day in an atmosphere of prayer. Living in a prayerful spirit. Ready to call on the Lord for any special needs but also ready to praise him for any blessing that comes our way. Talking to him as we walk with him. That way we should be strengthened and satisfied by Jesus. The Bible says we are to glorify Jesus, for he is so worthy. Jesus is my rock and my fortress, and in him I will trust forever. Thanks Jim. We now have prayer offered by joy, and that will be followed by a time to confess our sins, and our inadequacy to do things in our own strength. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know we have failed to put on the Christian armour and some of us have fallen dreadfully. We know it is important to acknowledge this to you, to be honest and admit our faults. We know the devil appears like a roaring lion at times, but sometimes as an angel of the light, and we fail to see him coming and we fall. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to take the advice given, and to take time to be holy by spending time with you, Lord, and to put on the gospel armour and trust you, Lord, to make us aware of the enemy attack of Satan, and to stand up against him in your strength and power. David fought against Goliath and won because he knew the battle was the Lord. He had confidence in your strength and had faith in you. Paul the Apostle said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Help us to remember to pray that same prayer for our safety and your glory. Amen. We now come to a time of confession of our sins. The Apostle John writes in 1 John 1 verse 8 to 10 If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Let's now have a short time of silence to reflect upon our lives and then we will say a general confession together. We say together, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way and broken your laws. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you more and more. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will now say a general confession and please respond with thanks be to God. God has promised in his word that when we confess our sins he forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. We close with these ancient words. May the love of God the Father 
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May it be so, Lord. Thank you for joining us on Partakers. Bye for now.